in the early 90s, uh, we were looking for, uh, we were searching for antimicrobial agents in animals whose immunity to infection exceeded what we could possibly uh, imagine based on the known immune systems that, that we were aware of. And I happened upon the dogfish shark. It turned out to be super hardy, easy to get a hold of, uh, accessible for certain types of chemical studies. So we began extraction of its, uh, uh, of its tissues, and after about two years of, of rather grueling work, purified from its liver and a number of other tissues, a compound we called squalamine, which turned out to be steroidal in structure. As good chemists, we synthesized uh, the molecule, actually beginning from a soybean steroid. So we do not kill sharks to, to get the squalamine we need for uh, human studies or for laboratory studies. And uh, we've been synthesizing it actually since 1995. And squalamine has been in uh, hundreds of humans in several human clinical trials, early stage trials, and so far in both cancer and eye diseases, certain eye diseases, in a number of clinical trials looks pretty good. Time will tell, time will tell, but we are quite optimistic. The way we think squalamine works is as follows. It's a positively charged structure. It actually looks like this. This is a model of it, and this is the let me get this thing unraveled here. This is, the, this is the, the steroidal part, and this is the positively charged end. This is a polyamine, and it's positively charged. And when it enters a cell, which it does through particular uh, portals, and only can enter certain cells, only can enter the liver and capillaries, so it doesn't go everywhere in the body, only where, I, where, where it has doors that permit it in, it will enter a cell, and it will be attracted to membrane surfaces that are of the opposite charge, negatively charged. Well, it turns out there are a fair number of membrane structures in a cell that have that charge. So squalamine will bind. It actually will bind. But when it binds, it displaces, it kicks off proteins that have been bound previously electrostatically positively charged proteins sticking to a negatively charged surface. So it, dis it kicks off, squalamine binds and displaces proteins that were previously present on that membrane. Well, some of these proteins play a role in adjusting the pH of that cell, controlling the flow of ions, um, are used to manipulate the actin system and so on. So what squalamine does, net, is to basically put that cell into a different state a state in which these proteins that I just described and these functions are no longer active. So what we would imagine would be that we would, if we administered squalamine to a human, to an animal, it would enter the body, it would flow into the liver, for example, it would rearrange proteins through, through this electrostatic mechanism I talked about, and would this would all be taking place over the course of hours. Well, this is the same time frame this, that viruses that match a typical viral replication cycle. So it struck me that, you know, a virus coming into the body while squalamine was coursing through the liver wouldn't necessarily recognize the liver because viruses adapt to, you know, specific tissues and proteins that it would have anticipated being there to support the infection or the replication cycle wouldn't be arranged in the, in, 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 in the way the virus had evolved to infect. So if the hypothesis was correct, we ought to be able to demonstrate that squalamine was in fact antiviral uh, by testing it in an animal. So what I we, what I did and began to do over the, uh, several, several years ago was to call colleagues around the world uh, who were studying viral infections in animals and in tissue culture, um, and uh, we began to test it. I reported uh, in the September 19th issue of 
Pan asked, the results of those studies, and the answer is yes, squalamine is antiviral. I will be taking and directing uh, uh, its, uh, its development as a antiviral therapeutic for human viral infections. I haven't picked the virus yet that, we, that I'd like to, like to target. It'll be a hepatitis virus of one form or another. But I'm terribly excited to see this move forward. I, I'm Michael Zasloff. I'm director of uh, immunology of the Transplant Institute uh, at uh, Georgetown University Medical Center.